Okay, you guys, this is the next installment of the Broken Masculine Spirit. This one is a look at the manipulation of certain women who maintain manipulation coercion of certain women who maintain the sacred whore identity the jezebel identity this is probably going to trigger a lot of women because this archetype has been owned in the rise of the, of the divine feminine which i think is absolutely fine um but i do experience a a, a rejection in a lot of ways from this energy and um I want to talk about it and how it co coerces and manipulates men. I'm also going to jump into fetishes as well. Now, this is branching off of the last video um, where I talk about where this is coming from. So the sacred whore or the, the Jezebel archetype is at the same equality of an enmeshed mothering over mothering the protector of adult male archetypes okay and um i went heavy on that in the last video so i'm going to talk more about the jezebel sacred war archetype now this is actually an ancient archetype that goes back very very far in our human history and it also is a part of the centering of men and um the modern day concept of decentering men, I think, is something that I don't know has ever been uh, experienced in the past. I'd love to know if you, and you know, this is an open platform, so I want your feedback, I want your corrections. Please let me know if there's something that I don't know. But as far as I know, the concept of decentering men is a modern day archetype and it truly helps women and men it helps women and not self-betrayal right when you center anything besides your own sun energy right every woman has a sun inside of her so to center another man another anyone besides yourself or your own children actually cripples um the woman and even when it comes to children she still has to center herself right and uh, prioritize her children which is one of the most challenging experiences that a woman goes through right spiritually when she's handling this energy so let's talk about the concept of the jezebel and sacred whore archetype and what their pride is so their pride comes from um, the idea that many women do not understand the needs of men um, so they they deeply identify men from their sexual identity and this absolutely thrives for men because first of all it's a self-gratifying uh, circumstance right so there's a lot of, of that that needs to happen in our sexual lives and in a healthy sense of sexual lives and so this is where it comes from because I think a lot of men um, don't have a healthy relationship with their sexuality growing up and the concept of the sacred four is um, really difficult because in some eyes she is demeaning like she's degraded right down to you know prostitution and these lower class level things but in some eyes and in a lot of eyes she is the current go-to baddie, the current concept for women and for men to aspire for. Now, there's levels of this that work because sex is important to us as human beings, but there's levels of this that become very manipulated and coercive because the concept, the reason that the, the archetype of the Jezebel and the sacred whore exists is because she differentiates herself from other women. It is from this position that the issue becomes tainted because it, it, it immediately means that you have to be a certain way in order to achieve this archetype. You can't have a certain lifestyle if you have this archetype and not everybody's gonna fit that mold. When the truth is, is that all women need sex and in a lot of ways, all women could embody their own Jezebel archetype, their own sacred whore archetype in a safe space. It may be called something else, but it's absolutely available to all women. 
So the reason that the archetype itself exists so strongly is because it differentiates itself from other women. It says and feeds itself that I know better, I know what he wants. And so this creates a hierarchy constantly of what is in when it comes to um, the trends of sex. You know, this, this is why you have pretty privilege where you had lighter skin being pretty privileged for some time or the BBL effect. These are things that happen when the Jezebel differentiates herself. She constantly has to um, change and recondition herself to fit his sexual needs. And, and the reason why is because when your identity is only based off of this, right, whether it's the Jezebel sacred whore archetype or the man that's manipulated and coerced into her, they all rely on lust and that becomes their foundational drive for what they choose to be and operate in the world. And this is why you have issues like pretty privilege. This is why you have issues like, you know, a small booty is not attractive. These are all coming from those spaces. The men who participate, who are easily coerced in the, into it, right? Um, the, the reason that they are easily coerced, I talk about this, is because of lack of foundational, unconditional love in life. And so we all have this. We all have our own... Um, things that we can fall into which become these empty self-gratifying places you know for me it's food my issue is gluttony and I have to constantly check on where I feel lack in life in order to control my need to overeat and binge eat okay so I'm sharing this with you not from a judgmental place but to show you integrity so that you can see when something becomes extreme it becomes an empty vessel and this is why anyone who participates in this will find themselves searching for the next big thing whether it's the next big thing that they need to look like they need to be like or the next big thing that he is searching for okay so yes it is this competitive volatile differentiation between one feminine and the other which happens across the board and then this is why you have you know, more extreme uh, traditional spaces where um, a, a girl is completely c controlled to not explore her sexuality for fear of her becoming the Jezebel archetype. When the truth is, is that when a girl embraces her sexuality, she's not the Jezebel archetype. She's herself embracing her sexuality. And that is how she understands her counterpart because she has the need as well. So the pitfalls that happen with the Jezebel archetype, some of these pitfalls is codependency, right? And the um, addiction to porn, addiction to um, overspending because you want to get the next best thing and that becomes very expensive. Um, there's this addiction, there's these attachments to um, social uh, class. If I am with a woman who looks a certain way, I will become more prominent in my own self-concept and with other people. So the, archety the, the Jezebel archetype is so enticing because she's willing to be used. She's willing to be used. And so this creates certain branches of men. Certain, some of these men never really understand what it means to earn because the Jezebel archetype also, also is willing to give off herself, prostitute off herself easily for him. All he needs is a form of exchange and he is able to get the Jezebel archetype. So he is incompetent in true intimacy with a woman in sex if he continues to indulge in this archetype. He does not know how to cultivate sex with somebody that, he needs, that doesn't require a monetary exchange. And this is why you see, right, the modern day Jezebel archetype showing herself and demanding that money be the forefront. It's not that money is the issue, it's that money is used as the exchange. And this, on a continuous, consistent basis, creates incompetency with intimacy. And this is what the Jezebel archetype, when she differentiates herself from other women, creates a lack of intimacy amongst women with themselves and amongst men with women. 
So she easily manipulates men into getting as much money and money in whatever ways they can in order to get her. And then she also easily manipulates them because it is something that they like, like just like how I like cupcakes, <laughs> you know, because I am I suffer from that in my lack in, in life. The Jezebel knows that he lacks intimacy and true unconditional love. So she uses that to her benefit, conscious or not. That is what is being used. In a lot of ways, the people who participate in this consistently don't operate in unconditional love. Conditions are the ultimate factor on how it happens, which is very different than the enmeshed mother archetype that I talked about in the previous video, where unconditional love can actually be used as a weapon for a stronger attachment, right? So in, in this archetype, unconditional love is very rarely existent. And this is why it requires conditions in order to find your, uh, your counterpart. Now, there are certain conditions that I feel as a woman I need, but they're more like standards and boundaries for myself. It has very less to do with what you need to be, but what I need. And so if you don't fit what I need, then I can't let you in, you know? So you guys tell me what you think about that. But yes, this is why there's so much strife over how much money should we make? How much should we be doing this? Should a woman be completely beta and he carry out all the duties of making money? All of these come up into conversations where conditional love is the foundation. So the Jezebel archetype creates incompetency with intimacy. The other thing that it it creates right is, is especially because she differentiates herself from other women right so now if a woman is looking happens to have the same looks as the current trend of what the new archetype is the new jezebel is she will fall into a trap and what i mean by that is let's say a big a big booty girl you know with light skin who is not wanting to be a Jezebel archetype is walking down the block. She, because of the Jezebel archetype, she naturally falls into it because that's what's trendy. And so she attracts unwanted sexual force. So the Jezebel archetype, because it creates incompetency and intimacy, and because it's based off of lust, it can create force, force of sexual favors. It can create assumptions, forced assumptions, like, well, because you're wearing that dress, because you're wearing that skirt, you definitely are trying to get my attention. It creates forced assumptions. And this is because the Jezebel archetype is differentiated from other women. So because she's a sexual archetype and you're not, but if you look like her, then you're assumed to be her. This is why the Jezebel archetype is also extremely har harmful to women because it, uh, it forces certain women to be so cut off from their sexuality so that they don't become this. And then it also puts other women in places where they want to embrace their sexuality, but they don't fit her conditions. They don't look her like her. They don't act her part. And then it forces other women to, to just simply play the game themselves. So then this leads me into fetishes because when you play the game yourself, you can fall into certain fetishes. And um, this is also deeply connected to fantasies. And I don't see fetishes as a problem, but then I do see it as a problem. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I would call it because I don't want to annihilate fetishes because I understand where they come from. But at the same time, they can cause incredible issues in intimacy. And I truly believe that when you are strongly a powerful, intimate person, then you don't need a fetish. But that's the issue is that a fetish is so much easier to obtain and to express than intimacy. Intimacy requires more vulnerability and more work. And this is why fetishes are strong in today's day and age. So one of the fetishes that is big is light-skinned women versus dark-skinned women. So if you understand your sexual attractions, they come from these different tiers of what we want and what we need. Some of these tiers are based off of innocence, like who seems to be more innocent and who seems to be more to blame. This is definitely something when you look at the fetish of light skin women versus dark skin women. 
there is a deep-rooted sense of innocence that's more attached to light-skinned women versus dark-skinned women in the fetish realm. Not in general, not under God's love, not in the eyes of sensuality and intimacy, but in the realm of the Jezebel and fetishes. The light-skinned woman contains more innocence. That's what's projected more onto her. She also is deeply attractive to men, like when we're talking about the black community, she's deeply attractive to men, black men. Why? It's a light skin fetish. What else would it be? Her fetish towards black men is their desire to un, uncondition their, um, their blackness, to get a little bit away from it, to be something beyond it from this deep rooted self-hate. The black woman and the dark skin woman is rising in a fetish. Um, some people would say it's always been there, so you can tell me what you think, but in my reality, it's rising because I see that more men who want to feel like they are black will fetishize off of her, the dark skin women. They'll want a dark skin woman because it will make them cooler, more hipper, because those are the projections that are placed onto it. And maybe there is a little bit of truth to it as well, it's up for you to interpret but this is the core of the fetish that i see happening i've done a lot of internal work on my limitations in sex and i think i've finally been able to chip off a lot of my blocks and it's from this area that i'm able to look at the fetish from a place of love and understanding what the lack is and why the fetish is persistently um, existing Men who are attracted to big booties and big booties only have a desire to get back to um, the mother, the feminine energy. This is also a level of social status and a sense of feeling like you are more dominant. It's the, it's the exact idea that I've been giving about men's validation of their masculinity. So having a really big ass to have sex with allows them to have something soft to land on have something easy to grip on requiring in their deepest subconscious fantasies less need to earn and less need to work does it is, is it true no but that's what the fantasy projects itself out as and for it's also a deep connection to enmeshment emotional what a desire to emotionally connect to mother to be enmeshed and so this is what this represents it is a overtly feminine um, expression on the body almost exaggerated and this is this is what it, it, it is from the place of a fetish okay now from the place of sexual lust and enjoyment everybody everybody right whether you know as long as healthy you know is an enjoyable vessel but when you condition it where all the women in the world want a big ass, there's definitely a need to recognize that the feeding is the fetish of this soft place to land, less work to do, like let you do all the work for me. You have all of this for me to do that work with and it's very enticing to someone who doesn't, who wants it easier for them, right? Um, when you look at smaller uh, asses, you know what I'm saying? These men are really desiring to um, enjoy the access to the woman in a space where she is um, also easily accessed. But um, it's, it's really about, um, it's not as connected to the earning. It's about getting straight to business it's like this straight to business idea these are the things that i am picking up on fetishes um so like this is why i say fetish isn't wrong because a lot of us kind of were allured by the fetish but when it's taken too far this is where it becomes the problem right and especially when women don't feel beautiful in their own bodies because they don't fit the mold of the fetish it's really awful to the feminine spirit to experience that so if it if fetish helps you feel good then it, it works that's why it's not a problem if you fit the fetish but if you don't fit the fetish then it becomes achingly painful so um the other thing is like passport bros and the connection to wanting to be with women who are um 
across seas. Now, a lot of this is cultural. Like people will say, oh, there's a difference between American women and um, you know, women who aren't American. And there may be truth to that. But I think that I want to mention that a lot, I don't see a lot of people mentioning is the, the lack of communication ability. When you're with somebody who you don't speak the same language as, you can feel more dominant. So these men may want to, you know, they kind of get off on teaching women stuff and see women as less smart and intelligent. And they would be threatened by a woman who is more intelligent and who can speak their language and speak it maybe even better than them. The male ego, when it's in its most lacking state and needs a woman to validate it, what could absolutely choose a woman who doesn't speak their language so they feel smarter than them. And of course it's not true, but this is what I'm saying what fetishes do. It allows the projection to write itself. <laughs> it allows the projection to write itself. And so these are the things that I have observed in fetishes. And so, you know, when, when it comes to like what women can do, I think you have to work with them. You have to find the one that you fit in and don't allow yourself to be conditioned to having to be just one. I, I deeply feel like it is a part of the sexual experience as a human, and it's not something to be annihilated, but it disempowers those when we don't know what it is that we're looking at. So I'd love to open the floor for whoever's listening to also share their ideas to tell me what you think, tell me other things that you think I missed, and let's make this a real conversation that can produce real fruit for us to walk through and, and improve our lives. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm doing that video.